When I was a young kid, probably around 10 if I were to guess, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world would have to have been cartoon mothers. Cartoon moms are a dime a dozen, especially in adult animation where most general setups are simply your average nuclear family. So there's a plethora to choose from. Your Marge Simpsons, to your Francine Smiths, to your Cleveland Show mom, I forgot the name. Now the internet loves animated moms. I mean, I see tier lists for them all the time. People must really care about their personalities. And one that stood proudly near the top of my list for years was none other than Lois Griffin, a family guy. Sure, Marge was nice and sweet, but Lois had an edge to her. She didn't take shit from no one. They were more willing to push her to certain extremes and let the comedy derive from how wild she can be, when not being restricted into filling that motherly archetype. However, as you could probably tell from the pattern of this ongoing series, the fun-loving, crazy aspect of her started to become pushed further and further, eclipsing the side of her personality that kept her grounded. Kept her relatable to all the mothers out there. Resulting in a character who's just miserable to watch. Someone who makes it evident at all times that she has no love for her husband, no love for her kids. Just a heartless witch. Only fueled by her never-ending conquest to ruin the lives of those whom she comes in contact with. You sicken me, Lois Griffin. And to think, I once thought you were a cool mum. Yeah, I said mum. And so with that, I think it's best I take you on a ride through the many facets of Lois's personality. You know the song and dance at this point. We're gonna go over how she started in the series, how the writer started to hone in on the more extreme aspects of her character once they started running out of ideas, and how she's now become a shell of her former self. This is Lois Griffin, a mother without... M m an icon with... Lo Lois Griffin. A bitch, I can't title it that. <laughs> so, Lois... Lois, Lois, Lois. Hey. With Family Guy starting out basing its characters on incredibly derivative sitcom tropes, it's no surprise that Lois started the series as the nagging stick in the mud to Peter's tomfoolery. Most times when she was plot relevant early on, it was usually to highlight that aspect of her character, but even then, it was more often than not for the sake of giving a different character some kind of conflict. Like in episode 3 and 4 of season 1, both of which feature Lois prominently, but they're both an eat of Peter's story. Like when he has to make sure everything goes right for Stewie's party as to not upset her, or when she feels neglected by him and so starts to involve herself in his life more as a result. Pugh, <laughs> women am I right? Even in season 2, Lois had memorable moments for sure, but she was simply part of that family collective. If she was doing something in an episode, it 9 times out of 10 related to her kids, or Peter, or the dog, I guess. That's why if you look at a lot of top 10 Lois episode rankings, I don't know why you'd be looking for that, it's your life, I don't judge. But they never list anything before season 3, and it's because Lois wasn't all that interesting. She was basically just a clone of Marge. Would you be shocked if I told you no women wrote for the first two seasons? Really, it wasn't until season 3 for Lois to do anything standalone, anything that builds her up as a character who could star in her own episode. Hell, I'd argue Meg was a better character early on. And she's Meg. Meg. Lethal Weapons was her first standout episode, which I think contributes a lot to the direction her character started being pushed towards. Here we see her join a Tai Jitsu class and become increasingly more violent, which slowly starts a rift between the family. Guy. Everyone begins getting pissed off, arguing, yelling at each other, and then... <clears throat> you... You just hit me. That's right. This was a pretty big moment in the series at this point in its run. With current Family Guy, this would be the tamest crap in the world, but it's the first time they really leaned into that dysfunctional aspect of their family and having them take out their aggression on each other. I could see someone consider this a jump the shark moment, like having Peter literally fucking hit his wife in the face. But I think if anything, it allowed the show to surprise people, having it stand out from its contemporaries. I mean, let's just say you're never gonna get a Simpsons episode where Homer decks Marge in the jaw. I think we can all agree though, should be used sparingly. This moment, while extreme, at least ends with them all laughing together, having gotten that aggression out of them. But this isn't something they can get away with doing regularly. I really think that would just go too far in the opposite direction of a generic family sitcom, and would result in a show that just feels like everybody hates each other. 
a wit. Season 4 is where Lois really began coming into her own, really starting to set herself apart from the character she's most often compared to. They do a few plots here that actually cross over with stories they've done with Marge on The Simpsons, which is great as it only further elevates how different of a character she's become. For example, The Simpsons did an episode where Marge gets caught shoplifting, but it's in a very Marge kind of way. Everyone is sick and she's incredibly tired taking care of them all, and so accidentally doesn't pay for something, resulting in her getting thrown in prison and the family realizing how much they need her, sitcom plot. With Family Guy, they also have an episode where Lois starts shoplifting and gets sent to jail. But it's not by accident, she gets a thrill out of it, resulting in the family needing to break right and being on the run from the cops. This was right after the revival, so the writing style had begun leaning more into these wacky setups where anything goes, and I actually think it benefited Lois the best out of all the Griffins. This is what I like to call Lois's midlife crisis era. A midlife crisis that has lasted... Uh, how long? How many seasons are we on now? About 18 years. We had the episode where she becomes a model, she becomes a news anchor, a boxer. She actually goes through a midlife crisis at one point and tries to screw Justin Bieber. Yeah, I guess when that episode came out. The line for how extreme they could push her had been pushed more and more. And while I do like a lot of these episodes, again, this side of Lois had arguably made her more interesting than ever. But like a lot of characters in Family Guy, the writers had to continue pushing this more and more, finding new ways to surprise the audience and it resulted in their fascination of strange boomer lol I hate my wife slash husband jokes. And once you take that cat out of the bag, you can't put it back in. You've already established that Lois is a more reckless person, desperate for a thrill in her life. So you can't go back to making her more similar to her season 1-3 to three counterpart. Nor do I think they want to. The mindset is that Family Guy is a comedy set out on making you laugh first, and so the family aspect has to be put to the west side in favor of. This is what our character is doing this week, and this is how our ensemble is going to react to it. It's kind of an issue, though, when your show is called Family Guy. Whoops. It's resulted in plenty of amusing episodes, no doubt, but it also puts the writers more in a corner. How do you top yourself when you've already established Lois to seek more in life? Well, what if we just meet her? He had her life. That's like... It's like funny and stuff, I guess. Other families fight too, right? Not this much. Do you think maybe we should think about getting it? It is what it is. Let's just get Stewie to college and go from there. Even as a kid, I really hated how miserable the Griffin family became. Just always at each other's throats all the time, and there's no place that shines through more than with Peter and Lois's marriage. The show's been going on for over two decades, so it's no surprise they're gonna end up doing a couple marriage crisis episodes, where everything seems doom and gloom. Are Petter and Lois gonna get a divorce? I can't handle the suspense. Again, a show like The Simpsons has no doubt done more of these episodes than Family Guy, but because the writers of that show have clear guidelines and restrictions for what is considered going too far, it's believable that they would have a rough patch but come together at the end stronger because of it. But with Family Guy, these restrictions either don't exist or are pretty goddamn lenient. Because they push their marriage to the extreme! Because the rules are so much looser in Family Guy, they can get away with jokes that seem like they'd be part of a bigger story. But the characters know that isn't the focus of the episode, and so they move on. I cannot tell you how many jokes in the new season are just... Lois hates Peter and gets with other men. But he doesn't care because the episode isn't about that. While at first they would generally give it some kind of purpose, like the episode where she sleeps with Bill Clinton and then Peter goes to tell him off only to end up sleeping with him too. Boy, you are good. It just gradually got pushed further and further, to the point where the gag is now just... Infidelity. Laugh. <laughs> and then it leads us to the Lois we're stuck with now, who despite everything she's done in the past, I think is at her absolute worst now. And it's because of one trait that I think has completely overtaken any kind of likability her character once had. And that is... She's quirky. Lois is kind of cuckoo. She's so crazy. Love her. Most Lois episodes in the series now are about her getting caught up in something incredibly minor or a brand new trend that she's addicted to. Like when she got into minimalism and starts trying to declutter the house, going completely overboard and becoming deranged, emptying the house entirely and kicking everybody out. Chris, I will not have your comic strip anger cluttering up my house. It's negative and it ruins my joy. It's like a more extreme version of that Taijutsu episode with the rift it creates in the family, but there the extremity was at least contained into that last segment, and ended on a nice laugh between them all. But here, like most new Family Guy episodes, the ending just kinda... happens. Suddenly the family finds her on the side of a mountain where she falls into a bunch of trash. So now she likes being messy again. 
Like, what? She was probably at her most arranged when she wanted something as minor as being labeled customer of the week at our local coffee place. I like that idea a lot for an episode. I can see the mindset of having something so small escalate with these massive ramifications, but they just have no restraint. She goes crazy and starts kidnapping the barista and his roommates, the police coming to take her away. Lois? I'm just finishing the dishes. I'm a good person, Joe. Lois only saying okay when the police pulled up into the house sent chills up my arms. What do you do in that situation but accept your feet? It's all you can do. That right there is the peak of the season. I don't know, maybe it's just the visuals. She's got such a dead-eyed stare now, like she's constantly disinterested in everything going on in her life. It would fit her character now for sure, but like, I don't want to follow that for a whole episode. That's depressing. Lois's midlife crisis has turned into, well, the rest of her life crisis. The writers have honed in on this new bitchy hates her life and hates her family side door, and that seems to be where they want to keep her at. I can only assume because it gives them the most storytelling potential. Which is a shame. Like, sure. Lois was never a favorite character of mine. But like Brian at one point in time, she kept things grinded. She was the voice of reason to her family's stupidity. She was loving and caring, and so when she did reach that breaking point, you knew things were serious. And that was always fun to watch. But I guess it just became easier to make her more like every other griffin wide, annoying, only out for themselves. So fuck off, Lois Griffin. You suck. That's my conclusion.